Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Todd Coombs and on this channel we do all kinds of things photography. Today we're going to do something on film photography, something I don't normally do uh, because I gave up film when the world went digital and uh, yeah, I never really looked back. But I know that film is a big deal these days. A lot of people are getting into it and it's kind of exciting. It's kind of different. Uh, but I want to talk today about picking a film camera because by and large camera manufacturers are not making new film cameras so if you want to get into the film craze you gotta go get an older film camera and a lot of these vintage cameras are becoming very popular and um, I don't really regret it but I, when the world went digital I kind of sold off all my film cameras and uh, use those funds to buy my digital equipment. Um, I had Hasselblads and Nikons and, you know, looking back, I don't really regret it, but at the same time, it would be kind of neat to have these things because they're super popular today. But I want to talk about picking a film camera because if you don't know a lot about cameras, but you want to go get one, uh, you kind of got to know a couple little things to look at because you're going to be looking at an older camera. Now, recently, I happened upon a Canon FTQL. This camera is uh, probably early 70s is when this camera was out. Came with a 55mm 1.2. The reason I bought this camera is because it was the same setup that my dad had when I was a kid and I was learning photography and we were taking family vacations and that was kind of the start of my love for photography was using a camera just like this one. So when I saw it, I bought it just if for no other reason, just the nostalgia of this is the camera that I got excited about photography in the very first place and uh, kind of launched my career from there. So when it comes to looking for a camera, whether somebody in your family passed it down to you or you find it in a thrift store, you want to know if it's going to work correctly and um, if it's going to be good to, to shoot with. So here's some of the things that I look for uh, in an old vintage camera, uh, at least initially, obviously the true test is going to be putting a roll of film through it, seeing how it turns out. Uh, but here's some of the things that I'm going to look for when it comes to looking at an old camera to see if it's worth investing in. Now I think this is probably kind of obvious, but one of the very first things that I'm going to do when I look at a new camera is I'm going to just look it over. So it got dents in it? Does it got scratches? You know, you can get a good sense of what the previous owner or owners have done with this camera just based on cosmetically. Just look at it. Is it scratched, beat up, torn up? Um, make sure you look on the inside as well as the outside. Open this door in the back. Um, you know, sometimes on the shutter itself, there'll be some mold or some, you know, just dingy gray stuff. You know, that looks pretty clean in this case. The inside looks nice and clean. The back door isn't banged up or scratched. Um, so just cosmetically, how does it look? How has it been treated? Um, these cameras were built back in the 70s and 80s uh, like tanks. They, I mean, they could take a little bit of a licking. So if you got some scratches, um, I wouldn't say that would deter me completely, uh, but I think you'll get a sense of how well it was taken care of over the years. Now one of the things I like to look at is the shutter speeds and take a couple of pictures at various shutter speeds and kind of get a sense of does it seem like those shutter speeds seem to be accurate. This is 1 1 25th of a second. Now that's kind of hard to tell, but if you get down to say a half a second, Okay, here's a full second. That sounds about right. Now if you put it on a second and it's very quick, or you put it up here at say 500th of a second, and you get a long open and shut, you'll know something's wrong. So does the shutter speeds seem like the accurate time that they're representing? I also always like to look at the lens. I don't know how well you can see this, but I always like to open and shut the aperture. I like to see if uh, the lens aperture blades are working correctly. Um, and most of these older vintage lenses, when you take them off especially, you should be able to open and shut the aperture blades and see that they're working. 
Another thing that is prevalent with older lenses is you can get what they call fungus on the inside. And if you're looking, I don't know how well I can show you this, but if you look in inside there, sometimes you can see these little things that are kind of growing on the edges. And, you know, if they spend a lot of time in a high humidity climate, sometimes lenses can get that. This one happens to seem really clean to me, but I don't always have the eagle eyes that you need. But you know, look through there, see if there's any scratches on the glass, see if there's any fungus, anything growing in there, any dust that shouldn't be in there. Um, but that's a good way to look through the lenses. Now, another thing that'll be a telltale sign of whether this is a good camera or not. Um, if you look right around the mirror there, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see that. There are some foam areas and there's some rubber seals the same thing is true inside the door on a lot of older cameras. This one doesn't happen to have it, but a lot of times you'll have like a rubber kind of seal around the edges where the door closes. Uh, that's just there to help keep light out. But if you look at those seals and those areas of, you know, a little bit of rubber or foam, if they're brittle, cracking, crumbling, that's a bad sign. Um, this one doesn't have it in the back door and out front looks pretty good. But if you can see that that is starting to deteriorate and crumble, that's a bad sign. Now, it can be replaced. You can send it off and they can redo all of that. Um, obviously, that's going to be a cost. Um, and once they do it, it's fabulous. But keep in mind, if you're paying a decent amount of money for a vintage camera, you're not going to want to have to spend a couple hundred dollars extra to do the update. So just something to keep in mind. Now, something else that's very important is the battery. Most of these cameras uh, are gonna take some sort of battery. Um, however, not all of them do. In the case of this particular camera, it takes one of these batteries. I can't remember what they're called, a 625 or something like that. What the battery is gonna do, um, if you notice on this particular camera, it still works at every shutter speed. Um, regardless of whether there's a battery in it or not. If you notice, the battery's not in it at all. But this is a benefit for a camera like this that it will fully function mechanically without a battery. What the battery is doing is running the meter that's on the inside, the light meter that's on the inside. So that's probably pretty important for most of us because we need a working, functioning light meter when we go out to take pictures to tell us this is the proper exposure. Now, one of the ways around that would be to have a handheld meter. If you're comfortable using one of these, or if you even have one of these, you can go without the meter. But if you're relying on the meter in the camera, you need to know that it works. So check the battery. Uh, sometimes you can get some corrosion in the battery compartment and that can completely ruin it. it sometimes if it's really corroded, you're not gonna be able to come back from that. Um, Depending on the camera, there's a lot of different types of batteries. Uh, this one is not my favorite because this one doesn't seem to hold a charge very long, um, which seems weird. But uh, anyway, check the battery, look through it, learn how the meter works. The, um, all these cameras have different meters in them. This one happens to have a circle and a needle. And between the shutter speed and the aperture, you change those until the needle is going through the middle of the circle. Um, Nikons have different things. A Canon AE-1, uh, by the way, has, what does it do? You, you, put a, you pick a shutter speed on an AE-1 and then you look through, push the button halfway down, it'll tell you the aperture you need to set your camera at. But double check that the battery is good, double check that uh, the meter is working. Now I just thought about this because I failed to mention this. When you are checking the shutter speed, making sure that the shutter speed sounds like what you've set it on. One of the things that I've noticed with Canons, and not this particular model, but the Canon AE-1, the AE-1 program, the A1, which are very popular film cameras right now. One of the things that I've noticed is that sometimes when you fire the shutter, they sound, and for a lack of a better term, they sound springy. Um, it, and it just sounds weird and it doesn't sound right. However, what I've found uh, even though it sounds springy, the shutter is accurate. So just keep that in mind. If it sounds a little weird, 
Um, and the Canons are the only ones that I've seen do it. I haven't seen Nikons do it or old uh, Pentax K1000s. I haven't heard them do it. But the, but the Canon notoriously has that springy shutter sound. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not accurate. So just a little FYI if that's the camera you're looking at and you hear it, uh, don't let that scare you too much. It does sound a little weird, but uh, I still think this shutter is accurate. So once you've gone through all of those checkpoints and you think you found a good camera and seems to be functioning correctly, the real true test is to put a roll of film into it, go out, take a bunch of pictures, take that film into the lab, get it processed, and uh, kind of do some assessments from there. Uh, hopefully there's no light leaks, there's no light getting in uh, behind the door or anything like that and uh, exposing your film. As long as there's not, you should be good to go. Okay, so I'm out here in the daylight. Uh, I got my film loaded, got the camera out. I wish it was sunny. We've kind of had a rainy day and the sun's been in and out, but on a bright sunny day, let the sun hit the camera. If there's any light leaks that are going on, this light's gonna get through there, obviously. Uh, but it's bright enough out here that I think, uh, I think the test will be uh, true. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a bunch of photographs. Uh, see how the meter works. I've got my little handheld meter out here uh, that I'm going to kind of check the two. Um, but we'll run a bunch of film through it, get it processed, see how it looks. So this is really the first time I've been using this particular camera and I hadn't used my dad's camera probably in 30 plus years. Uh, so a little deja vu with this camera. So that's going to be fun to do that as well. Okay, so that's about 10 shots. I'm gonna take these in, wait for the results, probably take a week or so to get that film back, which is one of the disadvantages of the film, I guess. But uh, if you got the time, maybe that's one of the neat things about the anticipation part of it. Um, but camera seemed to work just fine. Um, I'm not sure about the meter. Um, it seemed to be working correctly. Uh, you know, with my digital cameras, I just uh, trust that the meter is doing what it's supposed to do and it's very accurate. An older meter like this um, was giving me some results that I wasn't exactly sure seemed right, but uh, let's trust the meter and uh, wait to see the film. So, uh, focusing a camera for the first time in a long time was kind of an interesting thing too. I had to remember to do that. Um, so, we'll see if these images even turn out sharp. So, <laughs> But anyway, good time. Next step, take the film in, wait to see the results. Okay, film's at the lab. Probably take about a week to get that processed, but with the magic of video editing, it's only going to take the uh, snap of a finger. Okay, and just like that, I got my film. Not only did I get my film that fast, I am in my own backyard now. So, here's the good news. Now I know this is pretty unofficial, but if you look at the film, it seems to have some really good crisp images. I see no light leaks, I see no overlapping, they're all spaced out really nice. Um, that means the camera is advancing the film correctly. I didn't have them scanned or I'm not printing them out or doing anything like that. That wasn't the important thing. I just wanted to double check that I was getting good images. Now I'll probably get a loop and make sure they're sharp. Um, they seem to be sharp for the most part. So, But I'll look at these a little bit more closely and uh, I think they look pretty good. So I think the only thing left to do really is to put another roll of film in there and start doing some more fun shoots. All right, so the film looks really, really good. I'm very happy with the results. Success with the uh, vintage film camera that I got. And uh, I hope that helped a little bit, kind of what to look for in an old camera. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with these pictures, but 
Hope that helped you a little bit and uh, gave you an idea of the things to look for if you're looking for an old camera. If you got questions, let me know. Leave them in the comments. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, now would be a great time to do that, and I would greatly appreciate it. Leave me a thumbs up if you could. I would appreciate that as well. And of course, like I said, leave a comment. I always love hearing from everybody. And I will see you guys in the next video.